With the release of Fortnite Chapter 4 coming in the next couple of weeks, we must take a look back and ask the question, how good was Chapter 3 actually? Let's firstly take a look at the map. Now, my first point on this is I think the map was very well designed. There wasn't a lot of really awkward spaces when it comes to the competitive modes. There was a lot of new biomes, something that across chapter two, I think was missing a ton. You know, we've got sand. There was some random kind of orangey biome after a specific amount of time. I think the map was frequently updated enough to keep at least myself interested in it from a competitive point of view. I think one of the best aspects that has been added to this was chapter three, season four. In my eyes, I think that was the best map out of the four seasons that we had for two main reasons. The first would be natural mobility. So a lot of those balloons that were around the map, just a lot of ease of access of just getting yourself around, which made competitive really good. You know, we of course saw Kami and City win the FNCS using a strategy on top using these balloons for natural mobility. But over the seasons, over the years, I've just started to develop a more fondliness to maps that have more natural mobility on them. I feel like it's just a bit more rewarding to play and a little bit more interesting. In Chapter 3 Season 2, we of course had the addition of zero build now this is definitely fantastic for those casual players who let's be real don't have the best skills when it comes to building and therefore you know you can get on with your friends you can play with older people who have less mechanical skill like myself you can have creators who haven't played for a while celebrities all play the game and make content around it as well which is very very good i think the addition of zero build was fantastic my only concern really with the way that zero build is, is how will that be in the future? So how will the zero build aspect of the game impact the build aspect? In particular, for, of course, for myself, I'm wondering competitively, how much do Epic lean into zero build competitive and how much do they lean into build competitive? Because there is quite a division between the two. The zero build players don't often want to watch a lot of the build because it's confusing, it's hard to watch. But ultimately, the regular building mode is infinitely more competitive and in my eyes, more interesting. It's just, of course, much more difficult to watch. So I do really want to see what the impacts of this are in the long term. But right now, zero build, fantastic addition. Of course, we also saw the addition of a couple new mechanics, which I thought were fantastic. Mantle and Sprint in Chapter 3 Season 2, and then the ability to slide in Chapter 3 Season 4. And I think most modern games have a little bit more sophisticated movement than previously we had in Fortnite. You know, you could basically just move. That was it. You didn't even have 360 degree movement, didn't even have in-game double movement. I think the addition of Mantle, Sprint, and then also Slide is one of the best additions. If not, I'm probably going to say the best addition that Fortnite has added probably ever. You know me, I'm a big fan of the Mantle. It, the ability to make plays with it in Endgame, in fights and everything just creates such a more interesting development of how those vertical fights go. And in particular, how the low material and early game fights go as well. So for Mantle, Sprint and Slide, huge tick from me. But unfortunately, you know, we got to look at the next thing, something that probably most people will agree on for Chapter 3 that's been a bit of an L, will be the meta. You know, it feels like a long time ago, but of course, Chapter 3 Season 1, really all the way through to Chapter 3 Season 3, had a large focus on the SMGs. There was lots of videos about it, players complained, the casuals complained, competitive players complained, basically really everyone I felt like did not like the SMG meta. It was very, very spray heavy, and in my eyes, I don't feel like it was really that skilled. I'm very happy to see that in Chapter 3 Season 4, there's been a big change in that. And, you know, there really wasn't that many useful SMGs in that specific meta. So great that they finally kind of changed that. But I do feel like it ruined a little bit of the first few earlier seasons for a lot of people in the community and kind of just got people tilted. Another way of that would also be the shotguns. Of course, most people love a lot of the earlier season shotguns, a lot of the earlier chapter shotguns, the pump, uh, the tack, which you know kind of was back uh, and the charge shotgun. I know most people don't like that, but I just thought I'd add that in there because I'm a big fan. And really missing those this chapter, I think, in my opinion, did make this not really feel that great. You know, back in Chapter 2, Season 5, we of course had a season that did not have pumps. And at the time, I still think that's one of the best competitive seasons we've had. I enjoyed that a lot. Again, I like the charged shotgun. A lot of people did not. But as soon as we went to the next season, Chapter 2, Season 6, and the pumps were back in, I was like, yeah, that season was fun. However, now pumps are back. I just enjoyed it more. And I feel like that's generally the case. You know, Fortnite has been built around the pump shotgun and without having that in the game, it just doesn't feel quite as good. I will say, like I mentioned, the Chapter 3 Season 4 meta was very good when it came to a lot of things. The shotgun balance definitely being one of those. Shotguns felt strong, but not too strong. The biggest issue is kind of similar to Chapter 2 Season 5, where they're just kind of clunky. You know, the prime shotgun took a while to reload. Bit of a gimmick where the first shot did more. 
the ranger has this one shot on it so you always have to constantly be reloading so those shotguns felt a little bit clunky when you're trying to get into high level fights in all honesty had you just replaced those with kind of the pump and maybe the charge you know some older shotguns maybe even keeping some of those ones in the meta at the same time i feel like this could have potentially been one of the best competitive metas we've ever had because chrome splashes in my opinion were really good all the other additions in chapter 3 season 4 were amazing i think it was just unfortunate that throughout the rest of the season the kind of hype just wasn't really there based on the previous three seasons and that really folds a lot into the tournaments as well I felt like throughout Chapter 3, the tournaments got pretty stale. If you look at FNCS to start with, before the FNCS Invitational, so Chapter 3, Season 1, Season 2, and then Season 3, they were basically very similar. You just had qualifiers, some sort of semifinals, two-day finals, and as soon as that was over, we just repeated that the next season. There was no carryover. There really wasn't anything to like keep you interested in that FNCS format. Of course, with the FNCS Invitational, amazing in my eyes probably the best event ever i know people are gonna be like ah oh, world cup it was it was better and you know you're entitled to your opinion but maybe that's a conversation for another day regardless chapter 3 season 4 having the fnc's invitational was so amazing in my eyes it definitely i think rebirth a lot of people's interest in competitive fortnite be them casual viewers or even just myself you know because it just wasn't as stale and then cash cups were kind of similar for the first three quarters of the chapter it was just the same kind of cash cups and i really liked that this season in chapter 3 season 4 epic switched things up they changed it to the divisional cups it was a lot more interesting format but ultimately it missed two major things in my eyes the first one was the ability to de-rank so you know you got to elite you just kind of stayed there there was no no real reason to do that amazing that play you know there wasn't that fear oh i can drop out of elite and then secondly there wasn't like an end point goal you know it was each one was this divisional each weekly cup which was amazing but had they lent to a tournament at the end say like this will qualify you for a land tournament based on your results in all of these qualifiers now that would have been really cool and that would have meant every single week players were lining up to watch the divisional elite cup finals they're like okay who's gonna play well who's gonna like gain points or you know qualify depends on how it ended up working so they could get to this land next year and i really hope that's something that they end up doing with these next season and that there's a good progression of them and on top of that i think one of the things that made this season not feel as good competitively was that it seemed like there was a meant to be a lot of late game cups involved as well but they just clearly couldn't get the game mode working early enough so it seems like pretty much all of those have just gone i'm guessing this season would have probably felt a little bit more interesting and the divisional cups may even have had more interest had those late game cups repeatedly been out every single week as well i do think chapter one and chapter two were, were just better than chapter three more interesting more fun but what i hope is that this chapter was the chapter of lessons learned and progression you know hopefully when we look at this season you go smgs probably not great you know that's probably not something i want in fncs format and cash cup format okay maybe after you know two and a half years of doing the same thing it gets a little stale it's great that it's there and it's a staple of the community it's good money you know it, it's good entertainment but obviously as we start to see the interest in it started to die out this year until the fncs invitational which was as i mentioned very very amazing and again there's a lot of progression in the actual game mode itself we've got zero build all of the additional mechanics i mentioned as well and a lot more balanced meta into chapter 3 season 4 so overall although i don't think it was the best chapter i don't think it was quite as bad as we all anticipated at the start given the abundance of new mechanics we have to the game and i think this chapter will lay the foundation for chapter 4